Hi, I'm Matt Chesney. Hi, I'm Rhiannon Jones. And you're here for the launch of House of the Flying Wheel. I'm joined by Carol Jones, who wrote an article for Backlit on House of the Flying Wheel. Hi, Carol. Hello, Rhiannon. I just wondered if you could tell us a little bit about the article that you wrote. Okay, um, it's in honor really of Samuel Morley, uh, to which this building used to belong. It was part of the Morley factory, mainly dealing originally in hosiery, but he was one of the great reformers of Nottingham um, and one of the most successful industrialists. By the time this building was built, uh, in the latter part of the 19th century, the Morley factory was incredibly successful. It had a global reach. What the article tries to do is to link that with his philanthropic expertise and the fact that this now houses Backlit, which is a group of artists and makers who are showing work to the public and trying to regenerate the building's use in a very different way, but still in the spirit of the Morley tradition. And what's your impression of the exhibition so far? Fantastic. It's been a fabulous night. The work is really very interesting indeed. And what's happened to this top floor of the building? Because I saw it before it was regenerated by yourselves and all the wonderful volunteers. It's just fabulous. Well, maybe later on we'll be able to give you a little bit of a tour around the exhibition and you can see for yourselves the architecture, design and the building and also get a sense of the history of uh, Morley and what used to be here, which is quite hard to actually imagine, isn't it? That this was a, a, a very loud place to probably work. Um, or the noise that we've got around us this evening is people talking about art and enjoying drinks and the opening of the exhibition. Yeah, it was full of... Um, weaving and knitting machines. Um, hence it was called the House of the Flying Wheels, actually, I think, originally, um, which was a bit of a marketing spin, if you'll excuse the pun, um, to describe the building because it was so active. Absolutely. And I think we can see that a lot of the artists' work, they've actually used some of that in their context that they've put together for their exhibition work. Yeah, I think that's true. There are connections between the themes within the work that we're showing. Look back at some of the historical elements and certainly in the Yinka Shonibare um, piece, uh, the connection with the global textiles industry is quite evident and very beautiful. So I'm here with Mark Davey. Um, we've got a piece of work behind us. I'm going to chat to him a little bit about his practice. I guess my work's about the language of industry and machines and factory production, but hopefully it's more sensual and poetic and it kind of, it kind of skews that slightly in favour of talking about sensuality and maybe, maybe the language of gay culture. So it's not necessarily what you would expect from such a mechanised, industrially seeming piece of work. The piece of work's been reinterpreted for this show. Can you tell people exactly how it's different? Um, well, I, I guess it's just a spinning light with a pair of pants on, and and originally the pants were a um, pair of uh, designer Armani pants with a tag on, but for this show, uh, you convinced me to swap them for an original pair of Morley original man underwear. Gold. Gold, yeah, which, are, which were, were, were possibly designed and made in this very factory, actually, which I think is fantastic. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a very tongue-in-cheek piece, it's called Hung, I think it's fairly self-explanatory. It spoke about kind of gay culture, gay identity perhaps, also very masculine but quite, quite effeminate at the same time. I'm here with John Harris, who's co-curator of the exhibition House of the Flying Wheel. John, tell us a little bit about the artists that were selected and, and why they were selected with the historical context. Well, it sort of all started with both of us um, looking at the archive. Each of us were picking artists that we thought fitted in um, that could illustrate a contemporary portrait of Samuel Morley and his ethos. With Darren Banks's work, he took the archive and then with that archive reinterpreted to make almost like a, a pseudo archive within the gallery. And uh, I think with it being more of a research piece, it sort of put more emphasis 
on the research we had done, but also brings together sort of like each element of the works because it's so diverse in its reference points of like Julian Wiles, for example. I think what I found really interesting is the fact that in the front room we found like a bit of piping exactly the same as what he was going to build it up. And it was just like that really nice bit where the actual building referenced the work and vice versa. Because he's worked at Morley College since 1998, the title for the piece, um, Pelham System, is a direct reference for the Methodist Church, the sculpture department that Morley College occupies. And again, like, I think that's a really nice link to sort of linking up these sort of trails of where Samuel Morley has been, but also kind of forgotten about. So in terms of finding these pipings in the front room, which was a great find, um, and the architecture of the building being a really key part of the new build. Can you tell us a little bit more about what it was like managing and leading on the, the new build of the gallery on the second floor and the kind of challenges you had and also the surprises that were, were found as well? Yeah, I think it's just like the biggest thing I'd worked on. It was just the sort of idea that we could build a gallery that was marking the next stage of backlit, but also kind of a fit, uh, more fit for purpose and sort of thinking about like the future of it, but also with the build really working with the architecture, show the like beautiful windows. And also like there's not a huge amount of spaces, especially in Nottingham, that has this much natural light. And I thought, why work against it when you should work with it? It was like four weeks to completely gut the place and rebuild that and it was like a real nice sense of like an artistic community like everyone coming together to help i'm joined by skinder chief executive of new art exchange um hi skinder thanks hi. for coming along tonight well uh thank you for inviting me i'm delighted to be here i just wondered if you could share with us um what your thoughts are your initial impressions firstly with the new space for backlit and secondly for the exhibition well, it's amazing, actually, to be honest. I, I, I really love where Backlit is based. And I always, when I walk in this area, it reminds me, it's almost like the Bushwick of uh, Nottingham. So the, the Brooklyn of Nottingham, where artists are rethinking old spaces and making them come alive with um, their creative imagination. And I think this floor that you've created and this extra level, um, this, this loft penthouse, artist studio wouldn't gallery. it make a great penthouse to live in hey i would move in. <laughs> i would move in i think it's lovely it's got a lot of light you've got a great sunny day and um the exhibition it's a nice mix of um different perspectives and different histories and stories that relate to how backlit's been working over the last five years and it's great to see that after five years that backlit is is rising and stepping up and gearing up and representing the artist-led communities of Nottingham. Because to be honest, it's the artist-led communities that are the roots that make um, the, the artsy ecology or the environment come alive. I absolutely agree. I mean, if you'd seen it earlier today even, the graduate students from Nottingham Trent University that were here painting and working to help install, there's a real community feeling in Nottingham, I think, a real appreciation for arts and culture and for just having amazing events put on wherever it is. I mean, New Art Exchange also champions community, community spirit and generosity of spirit. And I think that that's something that as a city we do really well. As a city, um, Nottingham punches above its weight in a big way. I really believe that. And wherever I go, near every city I go to, and I mention that I'm from Nottingham, and I'm in a visual art circle, the visual art circle will say, ah, Nottingham, they're doing some amazing things at the moment. And, and I think it's great because there is a real camaraderie between the communities, the arts organisations, the artist-led movements, the city planners, the city thinkers, and the university. And I have to say that we're very fortunate that we've got two very brilliant universities with the Nottingham Trent University and all of the output of brilliant artists that they produce on a on a year on year basis and the University of Nottingham with their history of art course so you've got a really strong base to work from and, and a history it's a city that collaborates and connects and it shows that anything is possible and that's the brilliant spirit here that you've got enterprising entrepreneurial um, leadership that's led from the roots and that's really important 
because it's the roots is where the ideas sit, um, and and then work with some great artists from one end to the other end, but being on the same platform and presenting them in that way, um, and giving opportunity therefore, and giving the students of Nottingham something exciting to connect with and to be inspired by as well. So you're inspiring others to also take responsibilities um, for their own entrepreneurialism as, as artists and creatives. I'm here with Tracy McMaster, who is the founder of Battle over five years ago and is now taking part in the exhibition House of the Flying Wheel. Tracy, can you tell people a little bit about your practice and what kind of work you make? Well, currently I'm making work about people in Nottingham uh, and about their hobbies and about their pastimes and how they spend their time. Uh, this works about um, a medium who I approached to uh, try and understand a bit more about Samuel Morley, who obviously the exhibition is about. Um, and from this, I learned a lot more about his character and about um, the way he spent his time and built his empire, almost. Uh, so it's been really interesting. He said he felt at time part of him had been cut off third. It was a sad loss in his life he also talked to you about. Someone very known and dear to him. He now comes to me through the crystal ball as well. This was a big shock, though not wholly unexpected, he tells me. Though not wholly unexpected. Where are you taking me, Mr. Moore? Because whilst working away from slavery, he saw it before in his own eyes. <laughs> says about this place still waters run deep although he was caught between the devil and the deep blue sea you can now enjoy this experience here on his behalf success favours the righteous that's what he tells you were there any interesting findings um, from the project in regards to communicating with Samuel Morley? Well, Philippe uh, was really good to work with and um, he said that Samuel had become slightly annoyed when I think his sculpture might have been damaged and he gave me a date for that so that was interesting and I said that Samuel Morley is very happy about the exhibition and the fact that his legacy is living on. The experience has been so exciting and wonderful and I've really enjoyed it, yeah. Brilliant, thank you. Any more projects you've got coming up in the pipeline? Well, I'm currently working with Rubber Goat Films and we're making a documentary about Lenten Flats. So that's really interesting, finding out about people's opinions about the flats coming down and how the residents feel about that as well. Wonderful. I'm with artist Tracy Kelly. Tracy, can you please tell me what your first impression of the exhibition is? I think it's a really exciting exhibition. I think it's brought some of the most well-known names that are making contemporary art today into the city of Nottingham. I think um, it shows um, the vibrancy of the city and the art community here in Nottingham. And I think it also um, indicates the aspirations that artists have that live and work in this city. Do you like the diversity of the practices that we're seeing as well in the exhibition? I think there's a good range of practices. I think there's quite a lot of screen-based work, but all the different screen-based work is treated very, very differently um, between installation and um, between bordering with visual arts and, and being interdisciplinary. So I think the screen-based work is really exciting. And then you've got the sculpture resonating in the spaces and with the history of the spaces, I think that's what's important, that it's, it, it's actually working with the history of the space, with um, Samuel Morley, with ideas of like industrialization, philanthropy, um, abolitionism and um, lots of other things, education, and I think, and it's sitting right at the crux 
of like a really vibrant area. So I think it, I think it's doing really well. Yes, and it's a really great kind of atmosphere and buzz here tonight as well, isn't it? It is. Yes, I think there's lots of people that. Um, are catching up with each other, professionals in the city, people that are practicing artists, people that work with the arts in other different related ways. And they're, they're really excited about what's happening here. And, and it's also an opportunity for them to touch base with each other, talking about collaborations, talking about aspirations, talking about how we want to move things forward in the arts. And, and the um, private view for the exhibition has, has created that kind of melee where, where we can appreciate the art and we're very proud to have this art in the city but we can also talk about our own ideas and how we want to realise them. I think it's really nice how we've got a mix of local community, artists, university, children, families. Well I think I think that's particularly facilitated by this site, you know it's sitting at the crux of two really vibrant areas of Nottingham and also because of the history of the site it has links to so many other communities as well as as well as the artist community. So it, it's it's a real prime situation where art can rethink about the society we live in and the kind of society that we want to build. So yeah, I think I think you're right. And I think um, something else you were saying about the exhibition, the noise is a real key component to the exhibition and actually earlier today when I was in the space you really start to pick up on the subtle qualities of sound that some of the artists have weaved into the work like Darren Banks's yes, work. The skipping. Yes I, th I think there's this um, the site has really really influenced the work that the artists have made if it's new work um, if, if it's work that already exists, it's been very carefully chosen to fit in with the site. But certainly um, Darren's work that, with the skipping online, there's just that rhythm of machinery. And it's through the physical effort of the body and it's bringing again those notions of, of contemporary relationships to past industrialization. Something else I picked up on um, was how the film that we see, Yenka's work, the wooden flooring in the film actually matches almost perfectly the wooden flooring that we've exposed in renovating the second floor. So you've got these beautiful um, connections between the, the work that is being shown and the physical site of the building, which I didn't even realise myself until I was in there sort of helping finish some of the installation. And I think that's some of the joy of when you're working as a team to put on an exhibition like this and you're exploring the fabrication of the building and making changes to it and kind of excavating almost like archaeologists to see what potential the building has and and I think those resonances are like really exciting um, and you know a part of the process. I'm with Gavin Rogers, a Nottingham-based artist and PhD researcher at Nottingham Trent University. Gavin, I just wondered if you could say a few words perhaps about the new space. Um, well, the new space is absolutely fantastic. There's so much light and it's actually got me quite excited about the city again. So really? It's a really positive thing for me to come in today. So. Well, why do you think it's got you excited? Because I, th I think finally I've, I can see the space and the people that could actually make this city work. So you think there's a really good group yeah. of people that have come along tonight? A good buzz, a good vibe, a good group of people. Um, fingers crossed for what's going to happen next. Gavin, what do you think about the way Batlitz tried to be faithful to the history of the building, mixing the new gallery in with the historical past of this building? Um, I think it's fantastic to actually been able to combine what is a contemporary arts gallery, a nice clean white space with the, the oldness of the building, actually gives people um, access from the community, from their past to the present, which perhaps they didn't have before. And things like the window that we're next to, the way that Batlitz restored that, and yet at the same time being built in a black box space to show Yinka's work. Um, what do you think of the work? Um, I think the work, the work is fantastic. It's the second time I've seen this actually and it's a really good piece of work. 
We're really proud to present the work of Yinka Sonnebar, who's an internationally recognised artist, an MBE awarded for his contribution to arts and culture. He was also part of the Young British Artist Movement in the mid-90s, with people such as Damien Hirst, Tracy Emin and Matt Collishaw. His work deals with notions of identity and colonialism through fabric, textiles and sculpture. This piece of work you can see is called Umbala in Mascara and is inspired by Verdi's opera of the same name, A Masked Ball in Italian. This piece of work was chosen for its relationship to Samuel Morley's anti-slavery beliefs and brings together the idea of the factory with vibrant textiles, movement and performance. <laughs> <laughs> As this exhibition draws to a close, we will be celebrating the anniversary of Samuel Morley's death with a live performance by Nottingham-based artist Tracy Kelly. The piece of work will involve her having a live tattoo in front of an audience, and it's called Import Export. This looks at the contemporary concerns we have today for human rights and the slave industry. Please visit www.backlit.org.uk and thank you for watching.